everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Katarina. Today's video is going to be my spring empties. I have filmed my last empties video somewhere in the end of March and these are the products I have finished ever since. So I'm going to share these with you. Let's just get into it. I do have here one hair care product so let's start with that. So I did finish the Garnier aloe vera hair food hydrating shampoo and this one is meant from normal to dry hair i don't know if my hair is really that dry but it is really damaged so that's where the dryness comes especially to the ends of my hair but either way i did quite enjoy this shampoo i do enjoy this hair food line in general but when it comes to shampoos, I have now switched to a different shampoo from Garnier just because I feel I go through these shampoos quite quickly and uh, yeah, maybe I use have to use them a little bit more than some other shampoos. So at the moment I'm using from Garnier their olive something shampoo, which I feel maybe works a little bit better for my hair. I feel less is more with that compared to this one. But anyways, I feel this one was a nice basic drugstore shampoo too. I do have here a couple of body care products. Usually I don't talk about them unless it is some sort of a body lotion or something else a little bit more special. But I don't typically talk about just basic sour gels, except if I got it from a beauty subscription box or something like that. And uh, I do have here one sample that I have gotten from somewhere. If you watched my last 23 in 2023 update, you saw me talk about this. But this one is a sample of the Mario Padescu Rose Body Soap. I don't know where I have gotten this one. I quite liked the scent, but it's not something I would go and purchase the entire bottle based on this. Usually I just buy something cheap when it comes to sober gel. I don't really think about it. Right now I do have this thing that I want almost everything in my shower to be in a pump bottle. Recently I actually bought a sober gel that was in pump bottle. That was my only <laughs> criteria when I was looking for a new shower gel. But yeah, another body care product that I do have here that I think is worth mentioning is a body lotion. Or this one is actually the Body Soap Almond Milk Body Yogurt. And this one was in my 23 in 2023 Project Pan. I finished this one by the April update. I don't really like this scent. This one has a really overpowering, really weird and sweet scent. And the worst thing about it is that the sweet scent kind of keeps lingering around. And it's kind of hard for me to stand. It might be because I am pregnant. Still, yes, today that I'm filming I am 39 weeks and three days pregnant. It might be that I'm pregnant that I cannot really stand this scent. I wouldn't like it otherwise too, but now it's just really overpowering. I do have another one of these that I should still use and um, yeah. After that one I am not going to repurchase this one anymore. However, I do like this the body soap body yogurt formula. I just think the body soap body care is overpriced. However, if the products are on sale, I might buy them. And this body yogurt formula I do like especially for summertime because it is lightweight and absorbs quickly. I do have here some skincare also, so let's continue in the topic of the body soap. So I finished the body soap aloe soothing night cream. I used to use this specific night cream for years in a row because for some reason I had this thought that I want my skincare to be fragrance free. I'm not really sure why is that because my skin is not particularly sensitive and it usually doesn't really react to mild scents. Now I don't really care if the scent doesn't bother me, like with the body yogurt the scent is kind of like off-putting so it bothers me. I wouldn't want to put something like that to my face but if it is a nice mild scent that doesn't bother me and if my skin doesn't react to the product in a bad way I don't see a 
sent to be a reason not to use the product. But yeah, I was using this one for years because I wanted a fragrance-free night cream and I thought this one is good. Now I think this is maybe a little bit overpriced. The small jar of this one costs like almost 30 euros and I do think you could get something really similar for lower cost or something that works just as good. This is a nice night cream, yes, but is it something really special? No. So I don't think I'm going to buy this again unless I can get a really really good deal. I do have here another moisturizer. This one is just like a basic daytime moisturizer. This one is from the Inky List. It's their vitamin B, C and E moisturizer. I bought this one in January when I placed a little bit larger skincare haul to feel unique. And the reason I picked this product is that it was cheapest from the Inky List, so I wanted to give it a go, but unfortunately I did not really like it. This one is not moisturizing enough, even for me, and I don't have particularly dry skin. I would say my skin is quite normal now during winter time, maybe leaning just a little bit combo in summer. But yeah, this one, maybe it would be enough moisture for me in summer when it's really hot, However, this one doesn't contain SPF, so I don't bother. I rather want to have a product that also has SPF in it in summer, so I will not repurchase this one. I do have here one more skincare product, so this one is eye pad mask thing that I have gotten from a beauty subscription box or beauty advent calendar. So this one is from a brand with a mask use. It's their gold eye brightening and firming mask thing. I do use sheet masks if I get them from subscription box or for a gift, but I don't buy them myself. I just think they can be a little bit expensive and, you know, they do create quite a bit of waste for a single-use product. But those at least I typically do like, but this one was just annoying. First of all, I did didn't see any difference. And the second thing is that when I put this to my under eye, they would just kind of like come down. Even if I didn't do anything, I didn't touch it, but it still just came down and didn't stay where I put it, directly under my eyes. So it was kind of annoying and useless product. Okay, then before moving on to the makeup products, I do have here still a couple of nail products. So first, a nail polish base coat. This one is the Essence Extreme Last Base Coat. This is the nail polish base coat I have been using for years. So base coat is something that I do enjoy wearing because it makes my nail polish wear longer, but also because it gives kind of like a nice even base for my nails. I don't necessarily want to use something really expensive. With my nails, I typically use really affordable stuff. Like most of my nail polish collection is from Catrice and Essence. Then uh, I always use uh, base coat and top coat from Catrice and Essence because I just think they make a difference, they work and I don't see a reason to pay too much for products like that. However, that being said, I don't know if this one is still available. This one is at least not sold in my local Tokmani, where I typically buy my Catrice and Essence products from. So recently I bought a different base coat from Essence. So the one that I purchased is the Essence Color Grip base coat and I got to say I do like this just as much as the Essence Extreme Last base coat. Another nail product that I finished is the Catrice Iconails Gel Lacquer in this age for the very first time. So this one was a berry nail polish. Maybe I will show it to you a little bit closer so you can see the color. I'm so glad I finished this one because berry is really not my favorite color. I don't really like it in makeup, like not as an eyeshadow, not as a lipstick, and not even as a nail polish. I just don't think it's a color that suits me that well. So I'm 
happy to have it out of my collection. This one also was in my 23 in 2023 project pan. There actually might still be a manicure left here, but it's starting to be so thick that it doesn't wear well. It takes forever to try and also I really need to turn it around to get anything out. So at that point I do consider a nail polish being done. I do have so many other beautiful nail polishes to use. And in fact when it comes to my nail polishes I would like to do maybe a mini declutter and after that pretty much pan my entire nail polish collection because one day I would like to start getting my nails done at a professional and before that I do want to really work through my nail polish collection so that I don't have more than just a couple left in my collection. Okay, then let's get into makeup. I actually do have here one makeup tool first. So my Real Techniques Miracle Sponge. This is the beauty sponge that I use every single day to apply foundation. I don't like using brushes for foundation. I don't like using my fingers. I just feel for my skin personally, I do get the best result with a sponge like this. And there is a couple of reasons why I do use the Real Techniques sponge. First of all, it is really affordable, especially if you buy the four pack. But second thing is that the shape of this is my favorite because I do like to use the flat side here to apply my foundation, then the pointy side I use for my concealer. The original Beauty Blender I wouldn't buy, I just think it's overpriced. Maybe it doesn't start falling apart quite as quickly. Like now I have been using this maybe three months or so and I'm starting to have some wear down here in the bottom. But even if it didn't fall apart, I still wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable having a sponge like this that I would use for, let's say, six months. Okay, then I finished the Essence Fresh and Fit Foundation and this one is in the shade 05, Fresh Porcelain. This one is my winter shade. It is quite pale. It wouldn't match me anymore, but I finished this, I believe, somewhere in April when I still was my palest. And I got to say, I really do enjoy this foundation. This one is so perfect for my skin for every day. It just gives this beautiful natural finish. It's not too dewy, but it totally has some glow to it so that it looks natural. The coverage is kind of like medium, I would say. I do really love this. I also think it wears pretty well. Of course, with a foundation like this, I do start having some oils come through, especially on my T-zone, especially if it is a warmer day. But, you know, I don't expect something like this to look matte throughout the entire day. I would rather it to look natural. I'm for sure going to repurchase this one at some point. Now there's just a couple of other sort of everyday foundations I want to use. For summer I got a tinted moisturizer and then I do have even in my winter shade, another foundation that I want to finish before repurchasing this. But for sure, I will repurchase this. I've really enjoyed this foundation. And it's really cheap and I can buy it from a local talk money, so that's great. And then I finished my Catrice True Skin High Coverage Concealer. Even though it says high coverage, it it's not really that high coverage, like don't expect it to be third shape tape or elf camo concealer, it's not. Or in fact, I would say this is pretty similar to the elf hydrating camo concealer. Coverage wise, I'm not sure. I think I really should compare them side to side, but the finish is really similar. It gives that beautiful kind of like natural finish and the coverage is still good. I'm not saying this is a bad coverage. It's just not shape tape, as I said. But yeah, this is my favorite everyday concealer. Again, something that I can buy from a local talk money and something cheap and something that looks natural. I do have here a couple of eyeshadow singles. You have actually seen these in Project Pan Update videos, but I'm still quickly going to show them to you. These two were depotted eyeshadows. One of them was depotted from the KVD shade and light eye contour palette. This one was like an off-white shade and I was able to finish it 
as a setting set on my lid, also on my under eye, and sometimes I just use it as an eyeshadow. And then another one of these eyeshadows was depotted from the Jeffree Star and Rochini eyeshadow palette. It was the shade Safe Word, and this one I was able to use as a bronzer. I'm so happy I was able to find another way to use this, because there's no way I would have ever been able to finish this one if I just used it as an eyeshadow, because as you can see, it is a huge huge pan. Then I do have here a couple of mascaras. So first the Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara. And this one is a nice and separating mascara. It has a rubber wand like that. And I actually do like this kind of rubber wand. I don't expect something like this really to do wonders for my lashes. And typically this kind of mascara I only wear under my false lashes. Because under my false lashes, I just want to wear like a black coat of something. I don't like anything too dramatic there. So yeah, this is what I typically buy for that. At the moment I do have a different mascara, but I'm probably going to repurchase this one at some point. I do have here the Catrice Max It mascara, and this one is something that you can expect a lot of volume from. It also has a rubber wand, I will show it to you. It's a huge, huge rubber wand and I got to say, this one I don't like. So quickly I will end up with spider lashes and a lot of clumps and also the mascara on my lid and under my eyes. For me personally, it is way less effort to apply fall shears for the sake of filming or for, for the sake of special occasion than try to make my lashes look super good with a super volumizing mascara that I need to be really careful with. And I feel that is often the case with them. And anyways, I won't get as nice result as with false lashes. So while I don't wear false lashes on my everyday basis, I do like them for filming and special occasion. But yeah, this one, I just feel it was a little bit too much for me. It was a little bit too difficult for me to control, so I would prefer something just a little bit easier on everyday basis. Then I do have here some lip products, one kind of like lip makeup product and a couple of lip care products. Let's maybe start with the lip care. I did finish the e.l.f lip product remover. This one is actually a spoiler to buy 23 in 2023. I actually almost forgot about this product because this one is super old. I don't even know when I have purchased this one, but way before 2020. So I didn't feel comfortable applying this one to my lips anymore. And the way I was able to finish this one was to remove swatches. And I did recently film my lip product uses and progress video for spring and I always do lips, lip product swatches for those videos. So that is when I was able to finish this one. Okay, another spoiler for my 23 in 2023 is the Elovi Vanilla Lip Butter. I was able to finish this one today actually. It is now all gone. Maybe I will try to get like one last application out of it like this evening but basically it is all flat right now and it's almost impossible to get anything to my lips and I don't care to dig it from there. I'm happy I was able to finish this. This is another one of those products that I wouldn't have bought myself but I got it from a beauty subscription box. And then the last product is, well, it is a tinted lip balm, so it's kind of like a hybrid between a makeup product and a lip care product, but I consider a tinted lip balm still being a little bit more makeup, because I wouldn't wear them if I didn't wear any makeup at all. I typically like to wear them with no makeup makeup looks or really everyday appropriate makeup looks. So this one is the Catrice Powerful 5 Lip Care and it is in the set Charming Rose. It is rolled all up so as you can see it's all flat. So a really really pale kind of like pinky uh, tinted lip balm and uh, while it is sheer it still gave kind of like this 
pale layer to my lips that I personally didn't think is the most flattering for me personally so this wasn't my favorite also I got to say the formula is not that great I would expect a tinted lip balm to be more moisturizing than this so I'm not going to repurchase this one and I'm not curious to buy other shades from this same line Okay, so those were all of my empties this time, but let's still quickly talk about the value of those empties. And uh, I got to say this time it wasn't so high. In the first empties video of the year I had 20 products and the value of them was 175 euros. And for the price I use either what I paid for it or if it is a gift or from a subscription box I used the retail value of the product. This time I had 18 products and the value was 90 euros and 18 cents. And as you saw, I think everything was drugstore or at least almost everything. In total my empties this year have been 265 euros and 94 cents. But yeah, that is everything for today. The next time I'm going to film an empties video is probably going to be somewhere in the really end of summer, so it will then be my summer empties. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you on my next one. Bye bye.